<laughs> so hi again, everyone. Uh, first of all, just just to to, to be a little uh, for a little clarification. Uh, so my actual name is Jerzy Gutjarkowski. It's super simple to pronounce, but for some reason, <laughs> the people here have problems with it. Um, but that's 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 no biggie. <laughs> yes, of course, that's that's a great point. We will get to that. Um, so yes, I am here uh, to tell you something about different sports. Uh, see if we can see some differences and some interesting connections to physics. Uh, so, so uh, as was already mentioned, I am Czech. And uh, maybe you know the Czech Republic several decades ago. It used to be a communist Czechoslovakia. And there used to, they used to hold these uh, kind of mass gymnastics events. We call them Spartakiada. Uh, and it looks something like this. You have, you have thousands of people in a stadium and they all exercise together. They um, all have their uh, kind of like list of things to do and it's very synchronized. It looks very nice, it looks very impressive. Uh, and I was actually, during the break, uh, Marcel suggested to me that now, you know, we have you here like in the lines, stand, sitting like this very nicely. We could actually see if we can, uh, we can do something like that. So, so please, like everyone, uh, follow follow my instructions. Okay, start like this, and now move your hands, arms towards you. Okay, okay, we're we're, we're getting there. Like it's not we don't have the numbers, we don't have the practice, uh, but it's it's you, you get the gist. You get the gist. That's that's what's happening. So now, what, what is actually happening here? Like you can see all of these people doing these exercises. You can see it looks very nice. Why does it look very nice? Because uh, if you look, you, have, you see this person in the back and you see this, all the people behind her uh, here all the way to the back, to the left and right, and they are all doing the same thing. It is very symmetric. You can see it's very, it's very orderly. It's, uh, they are all, both, all following their rules, what they're supposed to do, and it ends up looking very nice. Now let's compare it to a different sport. Let's compare it to football. You know, football is, is one of my favorite sports. You know, I'm a huge Bayern München fan. I watch their games every day. You can trust me on that. Uh, <laughs> so this is what, what a normal football field looks like. It's also pretty symmetric, right? You can see uh, it looks the same on the top, on the bottom, left and right. It looks very fair. The rules are very fair to both of the teams. Like none of the teams is preferred, right? It's a fair game. But when you actually watch a football match, it's not so symmetric. It's very chaotic. Like the ball is going back and forth. People are running all around. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> People are running all around. It, it's a crazy game. Uh, and then on top of that, you, you have some people who don't even follow the rules. And then it's even, it's even more chaotic. Uh, so this is, this is a clear difference with the mass gymnastic events, right? So even though the rules are always symmetric and always very fair and clean, the way that the game turns out, or the exercise, is very different. There are some changes. So why is that? Well, we can have a look at the rules of football. It's uh, maybe surprisingly long, like I don't know if you would guess it's 228 pages. And also, they are changing every year, so like there's a version for this year and soon there will be a version for next year. But if you're interested, you can buy it very cheaply from the website of the International Football Associations. But I don't know if it's a very interesting read to, <laughs> to go through. And now, now, what does this have to do with physics? Now, one way that we can look at physics, or quantum physics and quantum particles, is that it's also a kind of a game. I mean, there's no score to speak of, but there are rules and there are players. So the players here will be our quantum particles, or in this case, you could, you could say electrons, but it could be anything. And the rules are uh, the quantum mechanical system that we are studying, right? There could be a lot of systems. It could be some crystal, it could be some metal, it could be some gas. I mean, you heard all of the slams before. There's a lot of things in quantum physics, but there are always some rules. The rules can be, uh, they can tell the particles what can they do, like they can move around on this lattice, they can bump into each other or Maybe we don't like that, they cannot bump into each other. Um, but now the question is, like, will they follow the rules? And more specifically, when they follow the rules, will it be nice like gymnastics or will it be chaotic like football? Well, the thing is that, you know, since it's quantum physics, you, you've heard it's just a few nanometers 
away, we cannot just like look at it, you know, turn our TV on, you know, in the evening, watch the game of electrons versus protons. Uh, that's <laughs> not something that you can watch. Uh, so, so that's not an option. Okay, so, so uh, how, do, how, do we, how do we know what is happening? Well, we don't really know, but, but why is it important? Well, the thing is that if you want to read about the rules of quantum physics, it's much more complicated than the f rules of football. <laughs> There's this beautiful textbook, only 944 pages, and it's just the first volume. Uh, and it, <laughs> it will set you back 125 euros. So uh, if you want to get into that, I can highly recommend that. <laughs> However, this is, this is generally for, for very chaotic uh, quantum mechanical systems. But if they move with symmetry, if they are symmetric, it's a little bit easier. It's only 324 pages. <laughs> and this is like true for, for everything in physics. Always when you have the symmetries, when you have everything nice, uh, it's very easy to, to measure, it's very easy to control, it's very easy to predict. Like that's what we physicists want. That, that's, what, that's what is ideal. But the problem, as I said, is we don't really know what the particles will do. Like maybe they will behave nicely, maybe they will just arrange themselves like this perfectly and it's like very easy to understand, but maybe they will be all crazy around, you know, stretching each other, being different types of particles and then no one really understand what is happening. And this is the problem that like we don't know what is really happening, we cannot easily look. Uh, and we don't even know which of these two cases will happen. Like if I give you the rules, if I tell you, okay, so I will have these electrons, I will have this lattice, you cannot tell beforehand how will they behave. Uh, so here is where my research come in. I, uh, we have developed a sort of method that, that can help with this. And to demonstrate how it works, we will go back to sports. So uh, if you think of these gymnastics, you can think of all of these people. Imagine that there's an exact copy of all of them. Right? So you have this stadium with these thousands of people and another stadium with another thousands of people. And together, it's one big, big stadium. Now this part is just like imaginary. It's in your head, but you can use it in your calculations and it can help you. Now if you look at it, like what's the difference between this picture and just the left part of the picture? Now there's not much of a difference because these gymnasts were already symmetric. So now if you see this person is doing the same thing as this person, that's nothing new because there was already another person here and here and they were all doing the same. So in this case, it's not very useful. But if we look at footballers, you can see that here it helps already. If you imagine, you know, you have your, how many is that, 22 players, I think? <laughs> <laughs> and you imagine that there's another copy of them uh, and you like fuse it together into one big football game, then this will already always be symmetric. Like, it will not be much of a football game because you will have two balls and it will be 22 versus 22. But, uh, but, but you can see that the same thing is happening on the left and on the right. And, you know, it looks a little bit nicer, even though it's a little bit weird. Uh, and so now you probably already know what is coming. We can do the same thing to quantum particles. We can, we can take our system of quantum particles with all the rules and just imagine that there's another copy of it. And now, whatever was happening there before, is, is uh, happening there again, and it's symmetric. Now, we call this, this ancillary quantum particles, but if that word scares you because it's too much physics, uh, I like to call them shadow quantum particles, or even more mysterious, evil twin quantum particles. <laughs> <laughs> so with those quantum particles, uh, if you kind of count with them you know, beforehand, then it doesn't really matter what, uh, what they do, like actually in the real part of the of, of your system, but altogether they will always be symmetric, so you can always use just the shorter textbook to understand that, and uh, you can apply it to any, any system that you want, and this is gonna uh, make us physicists happy. And that's everything, thank you. Thank you very much.